Hi, I'm Dr. Jack Ringer, and this webinar is about enhancing your patient's experience. So why is that important? Well, today to be a successful dentist, it's more than just doing high quality restorative or cosmetic dentistry. It's also about the experience your patient has when they're in your practice. A patient who has a really positive experience in the practice is going to be your advocate. They'll be marketing for you. They'll talk about you. If the patient's experience is positive, it can make your work workflow more efficient and hence more productive. And over the years and decades, uh, dentistry, like other fields, have evolved to improve the workflow or the experience of that particular industry um, or practice. An example in dentistry. Uh, decades ago, we had the belt-driven handpieces. Well, we evolved into the air turbines and then the electric. Now we're seeing everything we're doing is in the digital world. We've, we're evolving away from analog impressions to digital impressions. And those of you who have um, accepted those type of changes and moved into that in your practices have probably noticed um, an improvement in your workflow, your efficiency, the atmosphere in your practice, maybe with your staff. Uh, efficiency goes up, productivity goes up. Um, so when we're talking about all of this, the field of anesthesia in the dental practice is no different. For decades and decades, most dentists have been accustomed to taking the old handheld syringe and numbing their patient up. It works, and it will continue to work, but not many patients, if any really, uh, look forward to that shot. So that is one of the two critical reasons for this webinar, is alleviating patients' fears. Because their number one fear really in the practice is pain. And that traditional shot instills fear into virtually every patient that comes in there. Um, they've seen movies, TV shows, their own personal experiences, how people have scared them. And evolving now into an anesthetic delivery system that can alleviate those fears is just a huge win for both the patient and the practice. And also, by incorporating some of these new changes, and particularly what we're talking about today with a better delivery system for anesthesia, it's going to improve your practice efficiency. And in my world, which is primarily the cosmetic dental arena, um, this couldn't be uh, more true, which will be described as we go along in the webinar. So what if you could significantly increase your patient's comfort? administer a virtually pain-free injection without them getting that collateral numbing of the lip or the cheek or the face. And like I said, in the aesthetic world is my world. Um, it streamlines my aesthetic workflow knowing that when I am preparing a, a, a patient for a smile makeover and I put them in a set of prototypes or provisional restorations, uh, which will be followed by the definitive restorations. At each of those visits, I want to be able to assess the aesthetics and the phonetics. Now, traditionally, where do we numb a patient in the anterior for work like that? You know, we stick it underneath the lip, and that shot is typically pretty uncomfortable. Patient's whole face gets numb, the lip gets numb, it droops. So it's impossible for me to adequately assess aesthetics or phonetics at that visit. And that means the patient has to come back again. And on top of that, let's face it, the experience of getting numb like that is not something that the patient, uh, you know, felt was uneventful. They don't like it. But we now, and have been able to for quite a while, be able to anesthetize that, those upper anterior teeth when you're working without the collateral numbing. So we can now give a virtually painless injection, eliminate lip and face numbing, like I said, have a much more efficient aesthetic workflow, 
we get profound anesthesia in one to two minutes, and it's pretty consistent every time. The unit is very high tech, so that gives that high tech presence. And um, I've always been one for wanting everything with an, uh, that comes out with an on-off switch. But the reality is, if you're the first one on your block or one of the few with these new higher tech uh, devices, including, uh, as you see here, the uh, STA anesthesia delivery system, um, you're the one that gets the initial marketing benefit from it because it's more unique. Uh, when the numbing is so much easier, you get increased acceptance and hence productivity. And like I said earlier, you can take advantage of the marketing potential. So here's a picture of what's called the single tooth anesthesia device. Prior to the development of this device, uh, you, uh, people may have heard of uh, the system called the wand, uh, which is similar to this. This is just a uh, more advanced but SDA standing for single tooth anesthesia. So this system can allow you to not uh, just uh, anesthetize multiple teeth in a relatively or virtually painless manner, uh, but you can also anesthetize a single tooth, uh, eliminating the need for, uh, in most cases, block anesthesia and using that old traditional handheld syringe. So STA, uh, it's a pr proprietary, patented, computer-controlled an anesthetic delivery system. So it delivers the anesthetic solution at a precise and constant rate, which is below the patient's threshold of pain, because where do we get most of our pain when we're getting a shot? If a dentist is very careful with their handheld syringe in inserting the needle, there's very little pain with that, particularly if you're going to be using a topical anesthetic, right? Pain comes from the pressure of injecting that fluid. Well, the STA is injecting one little drop at a time. And I defy any dentist out there to hold, hold a handheld syringe and slowly inject one drop at a time. Uh, you can't do it, but this machine can do that for you. It's been considered one of the most revolutionary devices in dentistry. And it takes the guesswork out of this delivery system, particularly when you're doing the single tooth. And that's all related to their DPS or dynamic pressure sensing technologies. So the DPS system allows the device to identify the PDL space. So when you insert this needle into the periodontal space, uh, DPS will sense that and let you know, which I'll show you in a minute, that you're in that space. And then it will inject, uh, you know, one drop at a time. And like I said earlier, uh, you do that on a tooth and that single tooth becomes numb and you can do anything you want with it. You can prep it, do whatever, and it's just as numb as if you gave them a block. The system also monitors the uh, exit, pre exit pressure of the anesthetic. So if you are having too much pressure going down the space, it will let you know to stop and back out. Um, but you'll see in a second, there's a visual and an audio um, real-time uh, identification, if you want to call it, of what's happening through that entire injection. So here is a diagram on the right showing you the picture of the system on the left of the uh, control panel for the STA. And you can see on the top left, uh, it has a display to tell you how much anesthetic is left in the cartridge. So that lights up and lets you know. Below that, it says a pressure indicator. So when you are doing the STA, that pressure indicator will slowly increase until it reaches an optimal pressure in the PDL space. And like the previous slide, I discussed that if it exceeds that, it will tell you, and then you can back off. Below that is the STA button. So this you can activate or deactivate. So if you're doing single tooth anesthesia, you would activate it. If you're doing multiple teeth, and I'll show you the landmarks you're gonna use, uh, say to numb up 
uh, from cuspid to cuspid, you wouldn't use the STA feature. It has an automatic aspiration feature, which you can keep on or off, it, your choice. To the right of that, it has the volume control. Remember, this is an, not just a visual, but an audio system, um, which you'll hear in a second. So you can set that to whatever level, depending on the ambient noise in your practice. The select button allows you for different speeds of uh, the anesthetic being dispensed. So for instance, let's say you decide to do a block anesthetic like with a, like a traditional, uh, using a traditional analog or handheld syringe, you can put it on a higher flow rate and it'll inject the fluid much more rapidly. Um, and it has a couple of speeds to do that. Um, you can control or, or set the system to recognize multi cartridges when you're changing your cartridges. Um, that's just an added feature. You may not need that that often, but it's it's convenient. And at the other, at the very top, you see the auto purge and retractor retraction. So it controls the auto purge function, and you can hold down to retract the plunger, which um, uh, you is on the very top of the machine where the cartridge is. So here are some like screenshots and you're going to hear some audible sounds and if you look at the top left you see the uh, the display is lit up on the top left showing that the cartridge is three quarters full uh, auto purge is, is on and you can see below that it's lit up that it's starting to increase its pressure. STA is on. This is showing you how this works if you are doing the single tooth anesthesia. So it would sound like this. Okay. And it will continue doing that automatically. Oh, by the way, the system also allows you to do this, that when you first inject the solution and you hold on the pedal lightly, as soon as it has done a few drops, it will go to an automatic uh, release. In other words, you can take your foot off the pedal and it'll now just dispense the solution by itself. You want to stop it, you just touch the foot pedal. This is all controlled by a foot pedal. So the next one shows it increasing in pressure. Ascending. Okay. The far right one shows it's even going higher. Now, every time the needle dispenses a drop of solution, you will hear this type of audible sound. So if you just heard that, you know, beep after beep after beep, you know it's delivering that solution. Now, once it reaches and identifies the PDL, it'll tell you and you will hear this. PDL? Okay, and then you just leave the cart, the syringe there until you've dispensed the amount of anesthetic that you desire. And by the way, doing these single tooth, you, you need far less anesthetic than you do when you're doing conventional block anesthesia. You may only need a quarter of a carpule to anesthetize a tooth. And if you do have to um, pull back because of too much pressure, you will hear this. Okay, so in the anterior section, um, again, which is a, a lot of my world in doing cosmetics, um, traditionally, if you're going to be preparing six, eight teeth in the front, you would take your syringe and lift the person's lip up and inject in that vestibule and you watch their eyes water and the face gets all numb. And you'd have to do it bilaterally. Okay, you couldn't just give one unless you're only doing one side. Well, if we inject into the landmark, which is the near the uh, paddle anterior superior uh, nerve, okay, so it's called the PASA, paddle anterior superior alveolar injection, you not only will only have to anesthetize in one place, but you get bilateral anesthesia. You get anesthesia from cuspid to cuspid, and there's absolutely no face or lip numbing. Again, 
you don't have to put as much anesthetic in. It's certainly going to improve your clinical effect efficiency. There's no risk of intravascular injection. There's no major blood vessels there. Um, the only thing you want to let your patients know are two things when you use this machine, uh, and in particularly in this location, is one, because it's injecting one drop at a time, it's going to take longer than a traditional injection. But that certainly outweighs um, the consequences of having the traditional shot. Personally, I'd rather have that sit in my mouth for a minute or so and not feel anything than somebody inject more rapidly on the buccal side and have all of that facial numbing and some pain. The other thing you must let them know is that the roof of their mouth will get numb. And for most cases, most patients, yeah, they're aware of it. it it's not something that they love, but it, as long as you inform them, it's no big deal. So, um, like I said a minute ago, it crosses the midline. So you will be able to get bilateral anesthesia. You can see on the picture below there that the insertion of the needle is just done laterally to the foramen. And because the alveolar bone is so porous, and when you inject there, it'll just spread rapidly. And you'll be able to see the tissue blanch on the palate. And you'll also see the tissue around the gingival margin blanch on the buckle or on the facial side and then you'll, you'll know the patient is numb. So you can prep the teeth. You can even do, say, um, a laser gingivectomy, and they won't feel anything. Um, the numbing is very profound. Now, let's say you are doing just one quadrant on the upper left or the upper right. Or if you are doing a small makeover, your teeth are incorporating all the way to the second buys. Well, the PASA won't go back that far, but the anterior middle superior alveolar injection will do that, and I'll show you the landmarks for that in a minute. But you'll give one injection in that site on the left and one on the right, same as you would be doing if you were just doing the PASA, and you will get profound anesthesia from at least um, second by to second by, sometimes even to the first molars. And again, reduced dosage of anesthetic, um, improves your efficiency, no vascular issues, and again, that huge issue for me, I'm able to assess aesthetics when I'm doing my procedures. So typically, this is what happens with a patient's lip when you do the traditional injection from uh, the facial side, right? The lip gets all numb, whereas, and, and droopy, right? So with the AMSA or the PASA, this is what you get. All right, so uh, it's really just a win-win. The like I said, if if you want to call it a downside, it just takes longer to inject, and the palate gets a bit numb. So here you can see in this diagram the landmarks for giving the AMSA, and you can see the foramen uh, there on the on the shot on the skeleton skeletal. Sorry, the skeleton. And so if you're giving the injection midway between the free gingival margin and the mid-palatine suture, between the two premolars, you're going to get very close to the foramen. And again, everything is very porous there. The injection, uh, uh, the, the anesthetic gets sucked up very quickly, so you get profound anesthesia. Um, this... Both of these techniques, PSA and the uh, mid uh, the mid midline, uh, the, the, sorry, the the other injection. Sorry, I missed my words right there. They're phenomenal for anterior teeth, premolars, pri primary molars. So it's a great therapy for kids. Okay, uh, they don't get to see that horrible handheld syringe. Um, like I said, it's virtually painless. So it really becomes um, a, a great therapy of those practices that are treating kids a lot uh, to get compliance. So this particular patient I'm going to show you of mine, uh, we did a complete smile makeover on her, and we gave her the um, 
shots from the palette. And this was her experience. Okay, so we used a different way to get you numb. What did you think of that? I thought it was fine. I didn't have any pain. Um, I, uh, I didn't feel anything, and it was comfortable. Did you like the idea that your lip didn't stay numb? Yes, I did. But your roof of your mouth got a little bit numb, and I know that wasn't the best, right? Right. But other than that, it's yeah. better than getting that shot up in the front. Right. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Yeah, so with this particular patient, she was one of those that was taken aback a little bit because the roof of her mouth got numb, but she was forewarned on it, so she dealt with it because she's never had that experience before. She's had dentistry her whole life, she's had the typical shots where the face and the lip get numb and the eyes watering, blah, 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 um, but she never had this type of shot before, and it was very comfortable. She's one of these phobic patients, but she ended up doing, you know, basically a full mouth of restorations and was quite comfortable going through it. So the AMSA, sorry, that's what I messed up with. I was talking to you a second ago, um, or the PASA are going to have, uh, give you the ability to do a very accurate smile assessment. And as most of you are probably seeing in your practices, cosmetic dentistry is growing. More people are, are looking for it, and we have better therapies, better materials, better techniques. Uh, and this added to this uh, therapy using this device, to me, it's a no-brainer. I, I just could not operate in my practice using a handheld syringe anymore. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, so... You just have to look at your patient and realize, oh, I'm going to be doing, say, lateral to lateral. You're just going to do a PSA. You're, you know you're going to be for sure in the premolar areas. You're probably going to give the AMSA. So anytime you, a person listens to a webinar or attends a lecture and it's talking about a product, there's going to be a lot of skepticism because it, it may sound a bit like a sales pitch regardless of who's talking to you. So the important thing to do is to be able to look at notable sources, to look up the research on these devices to validate it. Uh, I think a lot of you have heard of Professor Malamad, uh, who's kind of like the guru of anesthesia, and some of these other authors that you see here on this slide who can validate um, the data and basically what I'm talking about. Um, I too, when I go to a meeting or whatever and somebody talks to me about a device, I, a lot of times I play devil's advocate. Uh, and many years ago when the wand first came out, I was very skeptical until I tried it out. And in fact, uh, myself as a patient, a couple of years ago, I broke a molar and I needed to have an onlay done. And I went to my buddy uh, in, you know, in my community, and he didn't have this device, and I didn't want to have a traditional shot. So I took my STA down to his practice, and I showed him how to use it within a couple of minutes. And he gave me a single tooth anesthesia on tooth, I think it was 19 or 30, I don't remember which side. And I can say without any fear of contradiction or anything else, I felt nothing. I didn't know it was being injected. There was no pain whatsoever. And my tooth got totally numb. He prepped it, felt nothing other than the typical sensation of touch. You know, numbing doesn't get rid of touch. Um, he was pretty blown away. And the next day he ordered one of these machines for his practice. Now, again, I'm not paid by... Uh, milestone as an employee to go out and advocate this. I'm a, a user of the machine. Um, yes, at certain events I'll get honorariums, but I'm just talking about this because I believe in it. So throughout the industry, the benefits have been reported that, again, state-of-the-art, we know that, improved patient experience, just like that was what we wanted this whole topic to be about enhancing the patient's experience. And that's definitely true. 
Uh, better overall ergonomics and ease and comfort. You know, you just, it's very easy to use. It doesn't have that scary look. It has a little wand with a cord to it. Um, you know, patients, again, if you're the only guy on the block with this and they have a good experience, they're going to tell their uh, friends about it. Okay, now how much business it'll generate you, who knows, but it certainly can. Um, you can, uh, it, it's an improved innovative injection technique. It reduces uh, stress for both you and the patient and also your staff. It's, it's obviously visually less intimidating, so it's great for children and phobic patients. And its benefits far outweigh the costs. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, it ain't broke, why fix it? But they could be missing out an opportunity if you got a couple of new patients because of this machine, uh, just from that alone would pay for the machine. So, you know, it. I, I don't think it is a smart thing just to look at the cost of this exclusively. It was the same thing when computer systems uh, for our practices came into play. We were doing paper, analog uh, records and insurance forms, etc. And then the computer systems, the digital world came out. We had to pay a bit of money to invest in our computer systems and our software systems. We did that because it was a far more efficient way of operating and then productivity increases. So it's a win-win-win. It's great for you as the dentist because the injections are easier. It's less stressful. It's more successful. You don't, you know, you get the patient numb every time. Newer technology. The patient loves it because it's more comfortable and less stressful. No collateral numbness. I'm telling you that I, I don't know if I can count on my one hand how many people I've given shots with the STA that they have felt pain. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah, it's a little pinprick or whatever but it really is virtually a painless shot. With those two areas, of course, your practice, the efficiency and productivity goes up. Uh, fewer cancellations for those people that wake up thinking, oh, darn, I got to get numb today, and they figure a way to get out of the, having their appointment. Um, again, increased patient referrals and possibly practice, practice profits. And it's good for your marketing. Um, you know, if you got one of these for your practice, you could take a quick little video uh, in your practice with your patient having it done, maybe interview them afterwards, put it on your social media, you'll get a lot of reach from that. So with that, I'd like to thank you uh, for participating in this, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Or if you, after the webinar, you need to reach me, you can go to my website, dentalcosmetics.com, or you can email me at drringer at dentalcosmetics.com. Thanks again. So um, I hope you all enjoyed that, and I'm going to answer a few questions now that have been submitted. Um, I have a question here from Dr. Barnard, I believe. He asks about, uh, is there a reservoir of anesthetic? I'm not sure what you mean about that, but the way the system works is you get a handpiece from uh, that comes with the system that holds the anesthetic, and that uh, attaches to the unit. Um, when that anesthetic has been exhausted, you replace it with a new cartridge, a new carpule. So it's just using your regular carpules and you use whichever anesthetic you prefer, um, like septicane or lidocaine, whatever you feel comfortable with. He also asked, do you re only replace the needle uh, each after each use, I'm assuming? Yeah, of course. Each of these um, each patient that you work on, you'll use a separate handpiece, which includes the, the needle. And by the way, those come in different gauges. Um, it uh, has a long, as you saw in the picture, like a tube that goes to the cartridge, which attaches to the unit. So when you're finished with the patient, you take that handpiece off and dispose of it. It's disposable. Um, I hope that answered your question. Uh, Judy Strum asks, is this approved for use in Canada? Well, I'm sorry, I, I can't answer that. I think you'd have to go to Milestone to ask about that. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't, but don't take my word for it. I've, I have no idea what the dental legalities 
are there in Canada. Um, uh, let's see, I get a question. I've worked with, for a doctor that uses this in the regular injection sites and has great success with it. Is there any way to get information emailed about the PASA and the AMSA? I am not familiar with this and it would be a great uh, for SRP, thank you. And I'm assuming this is from a hygienist. Um, sure, you can email me and I can, I can forward you on some information. Um, needless to say, in this day with Google, you can find out anything you want, but I'll have a look for you. Um, so Pamela Phelps sent that, and I will be happy to help you out. Uh, Ray asks, uh, the use of topical with the STA palatal injections. So interestingly enough, we've all used topical anesthetics to deaden the tissue. Um, I have found historically, uh, unless the patient really asks for it, I haven't really needed it. Um, to me, the pain of the injection is really, really minimal if you are slow, careful, uh, using a high gauge needle. I've just, I've never had the problem, but yes, you can use a topical uh, anesthetic at the injection site and that probably doesn't make it a little easier, but um, yeah, there, there's no problem with it. It would just be the same as using a topical uh, at any injection site in the mouth. Uh, Linda Horn says, can hygienists use this if they, if they buy the license? Okay, I'm assuming the question is, is can an, uh, a hygienist administer this? Sure they can, but um, depending on your state, uh, hygienists need to have a dentist, uh, you know, in the setting if they're going to administer anesthetics. But yes, the hygienists can use this if, if they are already licensed to administer an anesthetic. Um, Dr. Sadisa Bahat asks about the size of the needle. Um, I like using a 30 gauge. They come in. Uh, I believe 27 gauge as well, um, whatever interests you. I'm not an advocate of the block injection because I don't find the need for it. Um, so I use the shortest needle possible. They come in one inch, half inch. I use a half inch. Um, but, you know, when you investigate this, you can certainly try out the different hand pieces and see what fits into your workflow. So my next question from Dr. Othman is, what's the cost of one unit of the STA? And I gotta tell you, I really can't answer that. Um, in my practice, obviously, like everybody else, I'm concerned about my overhead, but I don't get myself really um, concerned about the cost of this using this unit because the benefits are so amazing to me and my patients, even if it costs me some little extra money, I don't care. Uh, but I don't know, Milestone probably could give you a more accurate number on that, but I'm not sure. Uh, how much is the upfront and how much for each use? This is Evelyn Chu. Again, pricing you'd get from Milestone. And like the previous question about how much for each use as well. Uh, I Again, I know in this day and age, uh, you know, making sure our overhead is managed really well, particularly if your practice is working on a, call it a thin margin, it, it's important to watch those things. But like I said in the presentation, um, you people have bought different pieces of equipment in their practice, even though there's an investment because the use of it and the advantage of it totally outweighs what they were using prior. So you as a dentist have to look at is not pulling out that traditional scary syringe that have been in people's minds for decades um, and having this high tech, non-intimidating unit 
along with the benefits of giving the anesthetic painlessly. And again, for those you are doing it for cosmetic purposes, um, it's a total no-brainer. Just think of the cost you pay uh, each time you have somebody occupying your chair. And if you're doing an anterior aesthetic case and their face is numb and you have to bring them back to assess aesthetics before you go to something final or photography, how much is that going to cost you? So, uh, again, yes, we got to look at costs, but it's not, this was not a, um, an issue in my mind for my practice to decide if I should use this uh, uh, in my practice. Uh, Carly Brown, is anesthesia prep prof enough to do procedures such as a root canal? Well, I got to tell you, I don't do root canals in my practice, but I have done uh, some open and drains on emergency cases. And yes, it is profound enough. do root canals but in those cases that i've done you know on those emergency basis like an open and drain or whatever um yes it is profound enough uh, the next question uh, from paula is is the anesthesia to the palate limited to the hard palate and does it filtrate over the entire palate if your anesthetic is being done at the PA, PASA location, it doesn't extend to the soft palate. Um, sometimes a bit does filtrate over to the soft palate when you do the AMSA. Uh, again, in all the hundreds and hundreds of people that I have done this on, the issue of the soft palate anesthesia the worst case scenario I've ever had with a patient is they just felt a bit panicky at first that they thought maybe they couldn't swallow. But, you know, we talked to them, they told them, look, it's going to go away. It's not a problem. And then they calm down. But like I said, that is so rare to have a, a patient with a problem. It's not a, uh, a common thing for a patient to feel, uh, get that numb feeling on their palate traditionally when they've gone to a dentist. So it is something that's interesting to them or it's a little, uh, at worst, annoying. So I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, next question, how successful can the system be used in lowers, especially in crowns and extractions? Uh, no one put their name down for this. Um, Yes, lowers, uppers doesn't make a difference. You know, the problem with giving an, a shot or an uh, getting anesthesia done on the lower is with the mandible being quite dense, uh, getting anesthetic to filtrate through the bone has been a little, it's a little more challenging than on the upper because you have that honeycomb alveolar bone on the upper. Though, um, if some of you have used um, anesthetics like septicane, you actually can get pretty good anesthesia with just uh, infiltrating. But yes, on the lower, uh, if you're doing a bridge prep from 29 to 30 for uh, 31 for argument's sake, I will use the single tooth anesthesia and anesthetize each individual tooth. I'm not going to block my patients. Um, anymore it's not comfortable for them it takes more time to do the sta but to me it far outweighs it extractions again my practice is very limited the only extractions i do and that's rarely is maybe some pedo uh, extractions and yes it works perfectly for that at least in my hands i i think the message that you have to understand with this is you're still giving the person the anesthetic. It's just a different delivery system to hit those nerves. So it's very, very effective. Um, somebody asked for mandibular block, what you use as size and depth, and sorry, but I don't do blocks anymore, but I would use the longer gauge needle uh, to find the typical landmarks for the block. But yes, it'll work just as well as your regular syringe. Remember, this system has 
the ability to have the injection rapidly float out, not to uh, drop by drop. So once you've injected uh, and you have found your landmark for the block, uh, you could just put it in more of the accelerated version or, or mode and just inject like you would if you were holding your regular syringe. I'm not trying to tell people that you shouldn't use blocks, um, but uh, yeah, you can use this as for blocks as well. Somebody asked, is this similar to a lig lig lignajet or ligajet or whatever? I remember that. No, the uh, well, yes and no. I mean, the lignajet was a manual type of syringe injection. This is automatic. It takes the guesswork out. You're not using any manual pressure. Um, so I, this is more of an evolution from that. Uh, that was sent from. I'm sorry, I can't pr pronounce the last name, Sumatra, Su Sumitra, I'm sorry. Does the length of time the patient stays numb is the same as a syringe injection? Sure, it's, you're using the same anesthetic. Um, when you are doing a single tooth anesthetic, um, you're using less anesthetic. It's gonna probably obviously wear off a little sooner. Um, you know, apples to apples, you're giving the same amount of aesthetic, you'll get the same length of time of being numb. But the good thing about this is that you are uh, doing an anest a shot that's less painful and you're using less anesthetic and it's more focused. That's what I like about it. You're not, um, you know, having the patient leave with that numb lip or tongue or droopy face or whatever. Uh, which none of us like. We've all had it at some time in our lives. Uh, so this does revolutionize your practice. Uh, the last question I have here is management of a hot tooth in root canal therapy. Um, we've all had the problem. Uh, again, I don't do root canals, but many years ago when I just started off, sure, I was, you know, doing everything. And you get those patients with a really hot tooth, and it's incredibly hard to get them numb. Um, I haven't had that experience with the STA because I haven't been dealing with patients like that. Uh, for myself, if a person is in that type of distress, I just send them off to my endodontist. Maybe I'm a bit of a coward or whatever, but I've my practice has evolved where I'm really not doing comprehensive general work such as extractions and root canals um, but I am sure there are plenty of people who uh, have used a milestone system uh, endodontists included that could help you with that maybe milestone could answer that for you so I don't see any more questions have come in now so um, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. My email was at the end of the presentation. If you want to uh, send me any questions, I'll respond. Um, Milestone, I'm sure their, their, their customer support is incredible. They can help you with whatever you need. And uh, maybe I'll see you at one of my lectures or at some meeting. So all of you take care. It was good seeing you. Bye-bye.